It's gone and uh, you worry about her and it's so glad to see the family black back. So let's go through our announcements today. The good news is it's supposed to be 60 degrees and sunny today. The bad news is we forgot to set that clock so Chuck's got two hours of preaching. <clears throat> Going through most so, of John Lennon. Yeah. <laughs> so, this thing's moving, Chuck. That'd be all right. As far as our announcements go, our regular service today, we do not have anyone having a meeting. Uh, none of the committees are scheduled to meet today at 5 o'clock. But tonight, we do have our potluck dinner. Join us for our monthly potluck dinner. We'll be showing the movie Overcomer. Has anybody seen that? How good is it, Scotty? Real good? <clears throat> so there you go. Scotty recommends that we all show up and watch Overcomer tonight. He's seen it. He's been, uh, we trust his opinion on it. So that's going on tonight with our dinner, so we ask that you come out for that. Uh, on Wednesday, the ladies will have their prayer at the Annex uh, at 10 o'clock. Then we'll have our evening Bible study that evening. So remember Wednesday. Uh, no senior supper this week. This is not the Senior Supper Week, so uh, and then we move on into next week. Uh, Saturday at 10 o'clock, WIM. Women of all ages are invited to join us for a time of learning, sharing, creating memories together. And I heard something about food. Well, I, actually, I didn't hear it. They were just talking about it. But the minute food is mentioned, Greg Chafin's ears go. <clears throat> and he honed in on that. So I think they're probably having food that morning. So girls, you may not want to share with Greg your time frame. If you I want heard to have something about sausage balls, that's what so, I sausage, Okay, so that's what it is. So um, I won't get into any of our uh, uh, long-term announcements, but if you look on the board and when you come in, you can see those things. Uh, Operation uh, Shoebox continues to take up stuff for for the, for the kids. I think they've got accessories one week and other things. Uh, Barbara's ministry will continue with visitation, so be mindful of that. And uh, one thing I do want to mention is next Sunday morning, next Sunday morning, the Sunday school department is providing breakfast for us. So I ask that you come out for that. We, we just completed different studies, and these studies were all over. Uh, some people were doing this study. Some people were doing this one. We're going to come together. I think the Christian uh, Ed Board and Sunday school superintendent would like some input. Are you liking what you're doing? Those kind of things. And you can speak up in the group during breakfast, or you can get him over to the side and say, hey, here, I like this better than this, or whatever. But input is a good thing. And then we're going to move in after that for a four-week study, Chris, is that four weeks or five? On Easter, is that a four-week study? Four. A four-week study. Uh, the same gentleman, Lee Strobel, that did the Christmas uh, study, we're going to do the same thing leading into Easter. So be mindful of that. So we have... Potluck dinner tonight, and breakfast next Sunday morning. It's good. Any other announcements? No? I'm in a good mood today. Yesterday I decided I was going to watch a ball game. I haven't been able to enjoy them ball games too much. At the end of that ball game, it sure was good to see old blonde haired Jake with a big grin on his face up there singing. Was, and uh, is this his last year? Okay. Will be his last year he gets to cheer? I think he can still do it again, but I think he's going to. Think he's going to? Okay. It's always fun to see him on, on TV there. I was watching ESPN yesterday. Had a good time. Any other announcements? Okay. If not, let's all please stand. <clears throat> I'm going to ask Brad, if he will, to have our opening prayer or call to worship. If you will, please remain standing for our first song. So, Brad. Father God, we come to you this morning, Lord, just lifting you up and praising you for your saving grace, Lord, that we know that we have faith in the testament, Lord, our son Jesus Christ, we will have everlasting life in heaven. Lord, as we start this Sunday school, Lord, Lord, we pray that we would step forward work through him, give him the word that let us hear it this morning, Lord, and to lift us up that we may drive our community, Lord, and the people we come in contact with, Lord, from the love of Jesus Christ. So 
49. 449, there's power in the blood. We're going to do verses 1, 3, and 4. Sing out nice and loud. healing up well. Of course, I get a text message from Brad and says, I have my moment to shine and Christy had to up me, so it's good to have Brad back too. In case you all didn't know, Brad was sick. Um, Brad's birthday is coming up. We don't want to forget Brad's birthday, so be sure to wish Brad a happy early birthday before you leave today. Um, but truly a blessing, you know, uh, at this time, last Sunday, I was sitting beside a very groggy lady in a hospital room and was able to listen to the service, and I'm going to tell you what, it's a blessing. I think this is why the church is where it is right now, because of the people who are able to just step up in a moment's notice and everything be handled in, in a way. Chris preached that message better than I ever could have. So, you know, what a blessing there. And then for Jeff to fill in on Sunday night to everybody and then to everybody for their prayers. Thank you all very much. Um, so with that being said, we'll go ahead and we'll take our prayer request at this time. Okay. Thank you, David. <laughs> Amen. All right, thank you, David. Donna, it's good to see you. I don't know if you were here last Sunday or not, but good to see you. Good to see you back with us. Okay, Pam Suffer. Jenny? Okay. 
Okay, family of Geraldine Maynard? Okay. Okay, thank you. John Riddle family, all right. Susan Crafts. Anyone else? Okay, Mr. Atkins, okay, and it's good to see you back with us, Nikki. Anyone else? Okay. I'd like for the ushers, if they would, to come forward, and we'll go ahead and receive our tithes and offerings, as well as we'll take these prayer requests before the Lord. Landon, if you would, will you take these prayer requests to the Lord and pray for the offering? Thank you for everything that you give us, Lord. Lord, we thank all these prayer requests.
we'll open up your Bibles to John chapter 11. And we're starting into a series, March to Calvary. And of course, we're playing off the month of March. Going into Easter, which is going to be the second Sunday in April. hinge this off of, but we're going to cover most of this chapter today. And in verse 25, it says this, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even if he dies. Let us pray. God, we just thank you and praise you for this opportunity to gather again in your house and in your name. As a group of believers, Lord, seeking to hear your word and find the fellowship that we find with all of our, our family, our brothers and sisters in Christ. God, I just pray right now, Lord, as we look in your word, God, that we see what it is that you're saying to us. Lord, as we, we hear you asking us to step out, step forward, to do what it is that you want us to do, God, we just pray that you give us the faith, courage, and strength that we need to do that. God, be with me. Help me to be what you want me to be. Lord, I'm nothing without you. Lord, control my thoughts, my actions, everything about me. That I might be an empty and broken vessel for your glory. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So we, we look here in John chapter 11, and there's a lot that's happening. A lot that's going on. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to read some of it to give you a picture here. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says now in, in verse 1, it says, Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. And it was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. If you remember back a while back, we talked about the lady with the alabaster jar. This was that Mary. Um, so the sisters sent word to him saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. And when Jesus heard this, he said, This sickness is not to end in death, but to the glory for the God, glory of God, so that the Son of Man, Son of God, may be glorified by it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister Lazarus, her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he then stayed two days longer in the place where he was sick. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. And the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and you're going there again? And Jesus answered, are there not twelve hours in a day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble. Because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles. Because the light is not in him. This he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. But I go, so that I, can, that I may waken him out of sleep. The disciples then said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death. But they thought that he was speaking of literal sleep. So Jesus then said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Therefore Thomas, who is called Didymus, said to, him, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go so that we may die with him. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. Martha, therefore, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him, but Mary stayed at the house. Martha then said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. 
Even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, Yes, Lord, I have believed that you are the Christ, the Son of God, even he who comes into the world. And when she said, had said this, she went away and called Mary, her sister, saying secretly, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and was coming to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and, the, and consoling her, when they saw that Mary got up quickly and went out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. And therefore, when Mary came where Jesus was, she saw him and fell at his feet, saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and was troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. So the Jews were saying, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind have kept this man also from dying? So we're going to stop right there for just a second. And then we'll go on down here and look in a minute. But you can already see a lot of scripture there, but there's a lot going on with a lot of different people. You see, we have Lazarus first. When this, this, this first starts out in chapter 11, we see that Lazarus is sick. But then we see that that sickness progressed on to Lazarus had died. And then we see as it progresses on, and we're going to look here in just a little bit, it says that Lazarus had been buried in the tomb and had been dead for four days. Now we've got Mary. Think back to Mary, how she broke that jar and she anointed his feet and she wiped her, her hair over his feet. That same Mary, she was at the house. Verse 20 says that she was at home. I would have to think, and look, when we go through stuff, we have a whole full ball of wax of emotions. I don't care anything in life, a, a big event, tra trauma, a, 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 a death, a, a sickness, a, an illness, a divorce, whatever it may be. There is a whole ball of emotions that goes with those. And God, I want to say this, God understands because God made you the way you are. And emotions are things that he put inside of you. So God understands, and we see that, but we see Mary here. I'd have to think that Mary was kind of pouting at the house. Maybe she was a little bit angry with Jesus, because what did she say? What did Martha even say when they went to Jesus? If you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Maybe Jesus' fault was what they were trying to say. If you had have came when we asked you to, Lazarus would be alive with us here now, but he's not. You know, and then in, in verse 32, we see that she vents that frustration to Jesus. If you had been here, he wouldn't have died. We can learn a lot from that. When we go to God in prayer in tough times and we're feeling all these emotions, tell him what you're feeling. Tell him what is on your heart. That's what he wants. I know when Christy and I, we have conversations, and sometimes they can be intense conversations. But those intense conversations lead to the better times because you get what's on your chest off. You share what's in your heart with each other, and it helps you to understand. It makes you feel better. It makes them understand where you're coming from. And that's what Jesus wants when we talk to him in prayer. That's all prayer is, is simply having a conversation with God. We see Martha. She confronts Jesus. She's hurt. She's frustrated. 
Again, she's telling him, if you had not, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. We see in verses 22 through 24, it says that she says, when, when she tells him that, that he, if you'd have been here, he wouldn't have died, he said, and she's making a statement, and kind of a request at the same time, even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Almost like she's asking him, can you do something now? And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Jesus made that statement, but then at the same time, her faith was maybe wavering, you'd have to think, because she said, I know he'll rise again in the resurrection on the last day. So she had asked for something right now, but then when Jesus pretty much tells her it's going to happen, then she's like, dismisses what Jesus says. So we see the emotions that's involved there and, and, and the wavering faith that Martha has. But did Jesus scold her for that? No. And then we see Thomas and the disciples. And, and, and we see that as Jesus is telling them, Lazarus has fallen asleep. Now, note in the New Testament, anytime someone who is a follower of Jesus Christ and they die, they're always referred to as asleep. Death to the believer is not a permanent thing. It is just a temporary thing. That body is asleep. As we see here in just a moment, and as we read it throughout the New Testament, and even in the Old Testament, if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will live forever. So we see that the disciples are confused, and Jesus finally has to just say, look, boys, here's the way it is. He's dead. He has already died. And we're going there, and I'm glad that he is dead, because now I can really show you who I am. And then they get confused, and then they misunderstand, and Thomas says, well, let us go so that we can die too. And I always thought, in studying for this, it finally clicked, what is going on? Why did Thomas say what he said there? And it's simply this, Thomas was being a pessimist, because they had just talked about, look, they just tried to stone you in that place, and you had to leave, and now you're wanting to go back again? If you're going to go, you know they're going to kill you. I guess they're going to kill us too when we go. That was pretty much what Thomas was saying there. So you see that there was a lot going on. It was, get, it was pretty crazy. Even in my notes, I've got crazy in all capitals. Distress. It was crazy. As some of y'all might say, it was cray-cray. Uh, but we find here the craziness transitions in verses 38 through 44. And we see that it says, after all this has taken place, in verse 38 it says, So Jesus again, being deeply moved within, came to the tomb. Now it was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. And Jesus said, Remove the stone. And Martha, the sister of the deceased, said to him, There again, Martha is the same one that said, I know, even now, God can do a miracle. But yet, when they say move the stone, she's like, oh, wait a minute, he's been dead four days. You know what it's going to smell like if you open up that door? We probably shouldn't do that, Jesus. You need to think about what you're doing here. You need to follow it through, kind of like me trying to even the candles out here where the one that got broke. I didn't think it through this morning. When I snapped the one to make a match, it magically snowed on the floor that Tara had cleaned this week. <laughs> so I had to clean it again. So Martha's saying, look, you need to think this through because he stinks right now. Jesus said to her in verse 40, Did I not say to you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they removed the stone, and then Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but because of the people standing around, I said it so that they may believe that you sent me. Jesus is saying a prayer. Jesus has went from crying to now he's praying, he's praying out loud. The reason why he was crying, I have to believe that was this. When he saw the pain, and Jesus being a man, Jesus was friends with Lazarus. It makes it plain up here. When they said that they sent and said, the one whom you love, Jesus was close to Lazarus. Jesus felt that pain. 
Bible tells us that he felt everything that we felt. He had to feel the, death, the loss. He felt all that. And he went from crying to praying. But in his praying, he was praying out loud, not so that God could hear him, but so that the people standing around could hear what was going on. And he said, I'm praying this, God. I know you hear me all the time. That's not the issue. The reason why I'm saying this out loud is so people can hear me saying what I'm saying to you, God. That they know the interaction that's going on. And so in verse 43, it says, When he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And the man who had died came forth, bound hand and foot with wrappings, and his face was wrapped around with a cloth. And Jesus said to him, Unbind him and let him go. Now, there's a lot just in those few verses right there. We talked about why Jesus just cried. We talked about Jesus praying so that people could hear. Verse 43, it says, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Why do you think he shouted? And why do you think he said Lazarus? It's simply this. If you look at 1 Thessalonians 4.16, it said, in that day, talking about the rapture, the day that we all look forward to as Christians, it says, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a what? Shout, a loud voice. With the voice of the archangel with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus heard, and he come forth. If Jesus would have just said, come forth, with a loud voice, what do you think would have happened? I would have to think that if there was any dead within his hearing, they would have come forth. I have to believe that one of these days when, when Jesus steps out and he does shout with that trump, we're each going to hear our name. Scotty, come forth. Think about that. So we see that Jesus called and he came out. And then he said this, remove the grave clothes. I like how King James, that's always what I remember Loose him. You see, when he heard Jesus' voice and he come out from that death, loose him. He was free. Now, we went through the, the text here as it happened in chapter 11. But what I want to look at right now is look at, so let's look at the application for today. Now, the first thing we look at in the first part of Scripture, 1 through 37 that we read, a takeaway that we can take out of this is this. God's delays are not always God's denial. God's delays are not always God's denial. Just because what we want, what we're praying for, what we think, what we know that God has even spoke in our spirit that is going to happen or He's going to do, and it's not happened yet, does not mean that God is denying that. You see, sometimes we have to go through things so that we can grow, but that also when we grow and people that are with us go through this and grow, God gets the glory. And that's what was happening here. Jesus said, look, you know, I purposely waited two days, and it's a day's journey. If Lazarus had been dead four days, most likely Lazarus was already dead by the time Jesus got the news that he was sick. But then Jesus wanted, you know, I want to make sure he's stinking good when I get there so I can show these people who I am. Pretty much is what Jesus is saying here. He waited two days, and then the next day he took the journey to there. So that made four days. God's delays are not always God's denial. I got a question for you. How many of us here in this room, or maybe watching by way of internet, we're dealing with things like we're afraid and we need courage. And we're feeling all alone. We need somebody. We're dealing with family issues. And we know family issues can be a lot of different things. Maybe we're facing something that to us seems impossible. Maybe you realize you've got a cold heart Maybe because of 
things that's happened to you in the past, or maybe just the situations that you're in right now, you're feeling overwhelmed, and you've got this cold heart about you. You're just going through the motions, and you wish you could change it. Or maybe it's something you're, you're dealing with you think has died. God, my marriage is dead, or this relationship is dead. This dream that I had is dead. Maybe this hope that I've been hanging on to is dead. Maybe the doctors have looked at you and said, I'm sorry, there is no hope. Everything seems dead. We've got to remember this. It's not what Jesus does, it's who He is. You look at as this event that's going to happen at some time in the future, and it is. But what Jesus was telling her here, because she had mentioned, I know that He's going to rise in the last day. But Jesus said, you're missing the point. Yes, there is going to be a resurrection at the last day, but it is because of me. I am the resurrection. The resurrection is not an event, it's a person. It's a person named Jesus Christ. And we've got to look and we've got to realize as we see all of the things that's going on in our life, maybe that seem crazy just like we saw here in verses 1 through 37. And we see the chaos that goes on in our lives. And we think, Jesus, if you would only step in, but you haven't. This dream, this hope, whatever it is, this sickness, whatever, if you had only been here, I wouldn't be going through it right now. But I want you to look at something. I want you to look at what Martha says in verse 22. And I looked in several different versions of Scripture. And all of them, I, I loved this. They all had those same words. It translated the same way. She says in verse 22, Even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Even now, my marriage is falling apart. Even now, He can resurrect it. That relationship is broken. Even now, He can fix it. I'm afraid of what I'm going to face in the future. Even now, He can take care of it. Even now, He can go with you through it. Even now, whatever your situation is, if there's breath, there is hope. And with Jesus, if there's no breath, there's hope. Jesus said it, but even now, he can get the glory. So, I got some questions to ask you. Do you feel like you're trapped in a tomb? Do you feel like you're in there and you don't have the strength to roll the stone away? You hear Jesus' voice saying, come out, come out. But you don't have that strength to roll it away. Jesus will roll the stone away. He even showed that in his own resurrection. The women, when they went to the tomb, and we're going to look at that here in a few weeks on Easter Sunday, they went to the tomb and what was their one thing they were concerned about? How are we going to get that stone rolled out of the way? And when they showed up to the tomb, the one thing they were worried about had already been taken care of because Jesus did it. You're wondering, how am I going to get this obstacle that's preventing me from coming to Jesus out of my way? I can't come to Jesus because this is in my way. I'm dealing with it. I can't get rid of it. Jesus can roll the stone away. You see, the grave clothes that Lazarus had on us, he walked out of that grave probably just inch by inch by inch coming out of that tomb. I, I'd have to think it took a few minutes. Could you imagine the suspense as they're there and they hear Jesus say, Lazarus, come forth. And they're like, this dude's crazy. Ain't nothing happening. But maybe somebody was there and they were like, you know what? I don't smell anything. And then all of a sudden, 
maybe you see a little bit of movement from back in that dark cave. And then here he come. Walking out. Maybe more of a waddle than a walk wrapped up in those grave clothes. But as soon as he got to where everybody could see him, Jesus said, loose him and let him go. Maybe you've got something in your life. The Bible talks about in the New Testament, cast off the sin and the weight that so easily besets us, that keeps us from running the race that God wants us to run, our lives living it the way God wants us to live it. Is there a weight? Maybe it's not a sin, but it's a weight holding you back to where you can't come out and say, Jesus, here I am, but you're having to waddle? God will let you know what these things are. But you've got to realize you may be thinking, God, I can't get rid of that. Or maybe it's a sin that, God, I have tried to deal with and get rid of, but I just can't shake it. Jesus can take it. You've just got to let Him. When you hear His voice, no matter how hard it may seem, you've got to start just to waddle towards Him. And as you start towards Him, those grave clothes will come off. Now it doesn't say, but I would have to think that once Lazarus was unwrapped, what do you think he did? I know what I would have done. <laughs> I'd have been running to the man that just called my name. And that's what God wants us to do. As we start towards Him and those clothes start to get loosened, and we get to where we can go from a step to a walk to a run and go towards Jesus. That's what we need to do. Musicians, I'm going to ask you if you would please come up. But there's another question I've got to ask. You know, we, talk about, we talked about the sin holding us back. I talked about, are you in that tomb? And you can hear Jesus' voice calling. Are you that person that's spiritually dead. You see, the Bible says that because we are human, we are spiritually dead without Jesus Christ. Because of the Adam nature that has been passed down since Adam and Eve to each and every person that's been born, we are spiritually dead. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 2, 1 through 5, it says, And you who were dead in your trespasses, now working in the sons of disobedience, among them we too all formerly lived in lust of our flesh, indulging in the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature, by nature, that means it's just a natural thing for us, the children of wrath, even as the rest, but God. And I always hear that Big Daddy Weave song when I read this verse now. Being rich in His mercy, because of His great love, which He loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, just like Lazarus, when we were dead in our sins, He has made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. You see, Jesus is saying, to each and every one of us. If you're dead in your sins, He's telling you, come forward. He's calling. I, I, this, this song's in the back of my mind, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, oh sinner, come home. He's calling to you. Listen to His voice. Maybe the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now, Christian, and He's saying, there's a sin that you need to get rid of. There's a weight you need to cast off. But you're thinking, I can't. He rolls that stone away. You know, I've got the bottom line that Penny's going to put up here, but I've got to say something that Wade said a minute ago to Jeff as he come out. Jeff asked, as the boys were coming up, what would y'all learn in Sunday school? And Wade said this. He said, God can do anything. That's pretty good. That's, you must have had a pretty good lesson, Jeff. God can do everything, anything. If my God can defeat death, and by I'm not even talking about Lazarus here, he himself being dead 
can bring himself back to life, then my God can do anything, even now. Are you hearing his voice? Father God, we just thank you and praise you. God, that you don't leave us in the messes that we're in, but you're with us, you're right beside us, you're strengthening us. God, and when we feel like we're overwhelmed, we're trapped, we can't do it on our own, Lord, you're there helping us through each and every time. And God, I just pray right now, Lord, as you have spoke to us through your word, whatever it is that you want us to do, Lord, right now, even now, we know what it is that you're telling us to do. The question is, are we going to do it? If Lazarus had heard Jesus' voice and not came out of that tomb, he'd be dead and would have never came out. God, if we don't listen to you when you're calling our name right now, we're going to stay in that situation that we're in. Whether it be dead in our sins or buried in our sins or the weights that we have in our life holding us back. God, I pray that you help each and every one of us as we hear your voice right now saying, Chuck, come forth. God, that we do what it is that you're asking us to do and that you get all the praise, the honor, and the glory from it. And it's in Jesus' name I pray these things. Amen. Amen. What number? Number 337. 337. We all stand. This altar is open for you and Jesus, not for anybody else to worry about.
<laughs> and if you don't like popcorn, you can do nachos. And I even thought about why not sprinkle the cheddar cheese powder over top of the nachos. To get the double in. I don't know. We'll try that. Graham, what do you think? I'm with you. Okay, see, there we go. <laughs> as long as it's cheese, right? And more cheese. All they make better is bacon. Um, there you go. <laughs> so, all hearts and minds are clear. Any other announcements? Look forward.